I would now like to talk to you about local adjustments within Adobe Camera Raw. Now, local adjustments simply means that we can isolate certain areas and make tonal and color changes based only on that masked off area. So, getting started, this image is opened up as the Camera Raw, and its first panel doesn't have any changes to it. So let's make some very quick minor changes. Let's open up the exposure and uh, open up the shadows, push back on the blacks, and add a little bit of vibrance. Okay, so far so good. Nothing crazy, and it just goes to reinforce how quick and easy Camera Raw really is. However, when you do look at this image, you can see that there are certain areas that are a problem that are independent of the area next to it. For example, we have the blowout of white over here. We have the dark of the hair up here, as well as uh, the irises that are falling into shadow as well. So let's work on those three areas to get started with this. Secondary things that do come to mind are, I can see a red patch around his eye, so it looks kind of like he was punched or something. And uh, his elbow is yellowing, but those are minor, and we'll tackle them as we go. So in order to access the local adjustments, they're going to be up here under this adjustment brush. Okay, It's this little paint brush. We're going to click on the local adjustment brush. Now when I click on this, the panel over here, this basic panel, and all of these sub tabs are going to disappear. It's going to change. Notice that when I click on that, we have a similar looking palette, but it is different. Most notably, black and white are missing. I don't know why. I wish they were there because many times I want to use them, but they're not, so it is what it is. The next thing that you'll notice is that it came in with preset numbers. Now these numbers are remembered from the last time you used this tool. Now unto itself that can be a bit bothersome, but other times it could be useful if I'm using the same adjustment. However, more often than not, I'm not, and so I don't like that it does this. So sometimes you can see it, other times you cannot. So I'm going to undo that. Often I like to just reset this to zeros so that there is nothing currently set for the brush. However, when I click, you get an error message. And this error message basically says that it can't make a change if there is no changes made. But we're just going to compensate for that by taking the exposure and pulling it all the way down. Just want you to know that that move of exposure to minus 4 is completely arbitrary. It could have been any one of these sliders. But as long as something was done is all it's looking for. I choose the exposure all the way down because it's a dramatic shift in the image from what I'm painting to what, from what it was to what I'm painting on. It gives me a clearer mask to work with. So, for example, if I take this and I do this, you can clearly see where I painted. Now, it's not going to be this color when I finish, simply in order to make the mask. Okay. Now, notice that when I did that, it hung over into areas that I don't necessarily want it done to. And it didn't get that area up there. So here's how we compensate for this as best as we can. It is a brush that we can make bigger and smaller. And a way to make brushes bigger and smaller inside of Photoshop are to use the bracket keys on the keyboard, which are above the Enter key. So bracket, right bracket is bigger, left bracket is smaller. Additionally, you can adjust the feathering by holding down the Shift key and make the brackets bigger and smaller. Okay, so I'm going to make a smaller brush, and then I'm going to fill in this area right here. But then I need to remove some of this, but I don't know how much yet. Okay, I just know this mask is too big. I can see it up here and over here and in through here. It, it's too much and a little bit up here, but I don't know how much specifically because we're cranked up to an exposure of four. So now I can set this back to zero. Now I can start working forward the actual change I want to do. So in this case, I will drop the exposure, but I won't go like all the way. 2 seems to be enough. I'm going to go further with highlights instead. And that takes it a little bit further. And I can't grab whites because there is no white. So I either leave this area white or I have to bring these highlights down more. 
well, I think it puts too much dark through these other areas, so I'm just going to brighten that up and let it fall how it falls. Okay. Uh, now, once I do make the correct adjustment, you can see that these areas that were super dark aren't as bad as they once were. But in order to remove excess mask hang, we're going to click on Erase. Okay, notice up here there was New, which is going to create a new adjustment. Add, adjust to the existing adjustment, and Erase, Erase from the adjustment. So let's do Erase first. So I know that there's a couple little areas in here that I can swipe and clean that up. Not bad. Okay, so let me show you the new and the add function. This right here is called a pin. And when I hover over it, that red is the mask that I have created. That mask can be adjusted down here below. You can see the mask. So I can click show mask and it's just going to show it. If I uncheck that, it shows it only when I hover over the pin. But if I click the red, I can change it to whatever color I want and whatever opacity I want. So completely up to you what you actually want to. The only thing I recommend is avoid the auto mask because it's trying to find edges. And if you have a sharp edge, it's fine. But when you have more gradients going on, like here, it gets confused and it doesn't do what you want. So I just assume do it all myself. So in which case, if I click add and I do this, it's adding to that mask and that adjustment. I'm going to undo. Now if I click new and I do something, this change is not this change, which means I can make different changes. For example, I can make that brighter, completely independent. So I'm going to click on the pin to highlight it, make sure it's highlighted, and hit the delete key and it goes away. Okay, So undo was control Z on the keyboard for the universal undo for everything. I only wish life had a universal undo. And otherwise, I hit the delete key, which got rid of the pin. So with new selected, I can make a new mask. I can then add to this new mask. And I can add to the mask. I can erase part of the mask. Or I can simply delete it by hitting the delete key. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to click on new, and then I'm going to do the hair. I'm going to make this brush a little bigger, and I'm simply going to come in here. I'm going to click on erase, and I'm not crazy with the way that that's ending, so I'm going to adjust the feathering. I'm going to give it less feathering, even less, because that's going to give it a harder edge, because I'm trying to hit that edge right there. All right. And then now, since I'm going to do under here, I want a softer brush. And a harder brush. And then I want to put some tone back in there. So I'm going to open up the feathering. I'm going to change it to add instead of erase. Give myself a smaller brush. And just kind of give myself a little something in there. Okay. Now, once again, this mask is simply a mask. Now that I put it in, I can see some clear definition to it. Now I can change these back to zeros and open this up a little bit by opening up the shadows. And take the erase, give myself a big brush, and just kind of tap it in. And there you go. If I want to, maybe even better, I'll open up the exposure and then drop the shadow. Just gives me a little bit more control over the lights and the darks. Overall, I do like that. Not bad. Again, it depends on what you're going to see on your monitor, whether you are too dark on your monitor or not. 
but ultimately that red is the mask and that's what it did. If you want to see what you've done and what you haven't done, you have a little preview button up here. And so you can see with a relatively quick adjustment, we've made a big change to the image. Instead of that white area pulling your eye all the way off the page, by making this adjustment, keeps your eye focused in the middle. Now we're getting there. We're not 100% there yet, but we are getting there. Another area that I would like to adjust is going to be his eyes. So let's zoom into the eyes. And in order to do this, I'm going to take not quite that soft of an edge. I'm going to give it harder and about that size. And we have an open exposure, so let's do this. Not erase, add. No, not add, new because we're going to create a new mask. And that means that my settings from the brush need to be adjusted. Okay, and then tab it once, a couple times just to make sure it's fully exposed. And a little bit there to make sure it's fully exposed. Now, other than opening it up to make it brighter, the other thing I want to do is add some saturation, just a little bit. And I can even change the color as well. Make it a little bit more punchy. Now, obviously, we have some oddity going on here. So I hope you can follow along that all we have to do is erase part of this mask. So now I can come in right to the edge here like this. If you notice his eye over here, it's most obvious that he has this rim around his eye. Now that is a natural thing for people to have the ring around the eyes. However, if you go out of your way to emphasize it in portraits, it really makes the eyes punch. And that's one of the big tricks of the trade. By taking this brush and softening it, I can effectively come along the outside and define the ring around his eye. And I'm going to do the same on this side. Now, because he's going to have the way the light's hitting him, we will have a shadow under the eye. Now, that's another thing that we're doing is creating this spherical shape instead of this flat color correction. So to achieve that, I'm going to open up my feathering and I'm going to drop down the flow. The flow is simply the density of the brush. So if I take this with 100% flow and do this, it just completely erases that section of the mask. However, if I change this to a low flow, and I do that, it barely makes a change. You understand? So all it is is an opacity for the brush. So now with a large feather and a small flow, I can take this brush and I can do this. And just go over it a couple times, and that's going to add shadow to the eye. Same thing right here at the bottom, very little. More on the top than on the bottom, but just a little something to frame the eye. I'm going to do it again up here. In this case, I can do a little bit more, and there we go. The other thing we need to adjust is the black center of the eye. Because the brush itself lightened that, we also need to erase that. So I'm going to raise up the flow. I'm going to lower down the feather. I'm going to just hit it like this. Now, if I want to also emphasize the white reflections in the eyes, I can do that as well. But for the sake of time, I, I'm just going to move on. But you could certainly take your time and really knock out these details, uh, like the whites of the eyes and, and other things. We are talking about camera raw, and I would like to say this, that when I do retouch the eyes and other areas, I'm mostly doing it inside of Photoshop itself on layers and masks. 
not necessarily in camera raw. I'm simply showing you that it can be done here without the need to get into Photoshop and learn all of that as well. But if you did that, you'd be able to add the lines inside of the iris and get more definition and detail inside of there. This is simply three examples of local adjustments you can do. And I'll quickly even show just his elbow here that has that yellow cast to it. Just click new and give yourself a nice feathering, harden up the flow as well, and just kind of do this. Just give it a little swipe. Now we can change this back. Zero, 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 zero. And then now just pull back the yellow. It's subtle, but it's there. If you don't want to look at these pins while you're trying to evaluate, you can click on show pins and that'll hide them. And I can do the same thing for the red reflection from his shirt and his eye or whatever, but again, you get the idea. Uh, and just to finish off here, you do have other options like sharpness, noise reduction, moray, and defringe. I don't use any of those. Uh, like most things, I'd rather just do it in Photoshop and get a proper layer with proper control and tools, as opposed to doing it within Camera Raw itself. And so this was a walkthrough for using local adjustments, which quite honestly is an incredibly powerful tool within Adobe Camera Raw.